The former governor of Ekiti State, Chief Shegwoni, has joined the Social Democratic Party, SDP, to contest the June 18th governorship election in the state. Oni was governor between 2007 and 2010 in the state, but he was defeated in the January 26 People's Democratic Party governorship primaries by former chairman of the party, B.C. Kolaoli, but subsequently dumped the party over alleged electoral malpractice and irregularities during the exercise. This new development put to rest the rumor making the rounds in the state that he had defected to the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA. Well, joining us to discuss this is Lanre Ogunsui. He is the media director of Shegoni Campaign Organization. Mr. Ogunsui, it's good to have you join us. It's good to be here. Great. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, listeners at home. So, uh, walk us through what... Um, you know, made Mr. Oni to take this decision to move to the Social Democratic Party. What's his real reason? Because some days, some days ago, we all, all of us were assuming that he was going to move to APCA because that was a rumor that was flying around. But now we know that he's with the Social Democratic Party. What informed that move? Yeah. Uh, good evening, listeners at home. Once again, uh, it's good to have you interview me on, it, on this. He was rumored to be going to Abga because the people in Abga wanted him to be in Abga. So they flew the kite. Um, more than five parties wanted him to join them to be their uh, gubernatorial candidate. And I won't be surprised in the next few days where you see a rainbow coalition of parties coming together to back his candidature. So, but I can tell you he's going to contest in SDP is uh, we, SDP is the ticket. That's why we are going to contest the elections. I'm still yet to understand why he left the People's Democratic Party, being that he left the people. He left the People's Democratic Party because the People's Democratic Party has uh, lost its uh, democratic credentials. How uh, so? The party, is, yes, uh, in the state, the, you you in what in your. In your introduction now, you said uh, uh, the former chairman, whose tenure as chairman has not expired, has also been promoted to the gubernatorial candidate. Uh, the, even the chairmanship is a matter of contention in court. So when you have a, a, a situation where a party is being run on the goodwill and court worship, of uh, uh, the former governor of the state, His Excellency uh, Ayofayoshi, you will see that people who believe in democracy have no home in PDP as it's presently being run in the state. Could there not have been better ways to deal with the issue? Uh, I mean, could this matter have not been taken to or brought to the attention of the national? Uh, I mean, I'm not in any way trying to make a case for the People's Democratic Party, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand, are there no internal party mechanisms that could address issues such as this, other than people or members being uh, allowed to dump the party or jump ship? The National Working Committee itself is seen to be working hands in glove with His Excellency Shifai of Ayoshi. Let me tell you why we think why we have we think that is the position. The man who who presided over the Bosch three man ad hoc committee, you know, there was supposed to be a three three man ad hoc committee, ad hoc delegates to contest the real election on the 22nd of uh, January. The same person, and that was cancelled because it was marked by with irregularities. The same person, Governor Udom, who presided over that, that had to be cancelled, was the same person who presided four days later over the primaries. But we were told, I remember, I remember interviewing one of the governorship candidates, I'm talking about Eleka, who mentioned that Governor Udo Emanuel himself was not there uh, on the first, the day, the first time that the primary was held, the one that was cancelled initially, that he sent someone to represent him. Uh, I, I'm guessing that that's why he had to be returned this time in person to do the job. Again, I am not a member of the People's Democratic Party, but I'm just giving you a reported statement. 
So what, what I'm saying is that if somebody abdicated the responsibility without any cogent reason four days ago, and that had to be cancelled, don't forget that it dampened the spirit of the members because they were on the field, nothing happened, and results were taken to Abuja and presented as authentic results from an election. That in itself is an indictment that, you know, somebody sat down, so five people sat down and said, this is the result of the three-man accord delegate election in the Kiji state. But because the evidences to show that it never took place were overwhelming, it had to be cancelled. And then such a man is given such a delicate responsibility. And look at the way he did it. It was, on, it was live. It was streamed live. You have a situation where a presiding officer is telling a former governor of the state that I will get you arrested, shouting everybody down and saying, I'm holding a list which had been doctored from Abuja and saying, if I can't find your name, in fact, there were people, let me tell you what happened. People whose names were on the list were not allowed to enter the voting center because of flimsy excuses. But one major issue that we are forgetting to look at is that the, drafter of, the drafters of the constitution said that disabled people should be participants in that election. And they were supposed to have been elected uh, along with three man ad hoc uh, delegates four days earlier. They were not there. So you're saying, you're alleging that disabled people, uh, people who have physical challenges, were not allowed into the exercise because they of their physical not, disabilities? Their, their, names were not even, their names were not even on the delegates list because the three man ad hoc delegates. Uh, uh, our delegates election have been cancelled hmm. and they are not they are not thinking about the, they just want to gloss over it and produce a gubernatorial candidate that's one of the high irregularities principle there there were people who were who were not even physically challenged who were who were excluded from the process hmm. and there the all the physically challenged people in the state were excluded such that they are chairman because they have an association. Protested that what what does the future hold for them if the drafters of the constitution says that they must be represented in the choice in, in the process of choosing a gubernatorial, a gubernatorial candidate so they can have a voice in government and they were excluded from the process. That's one. It was it was supposed to be a secret ballot. But it is the, 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 the video has gone viral where people voted and went to show His Excellency Shibaya Parishi that look at, I voted for you. The system was bastardized. And where you will say, well, peace enforcement was there. No peacekeeping. Because there was a, a lot of, I will get you arrested, I will get you locked up, and all that. Then, apart from that, the intimidation, then people started showing how they voted, huh. which, which in itself has marked the, the, the concept of secret ballot. Okay. So, so you, this you, is what, you so, cannot, so you're saying that all of, the, all of these anomalies had made your principal decide that he was moving to the SDP. He, was, he, wasn't, he wasn't the one that decided. It was we, the followers, because actually immediately after the election, Chief Oni is a gentleman. He, he, he was interviewed and he congratulated the winner. He actually said he perceived the system to be free and fair. But when people were excluded, told him that we were there, we were excluded, we were prevented from coming in, one. Two, he saw the video clips of how the process was bastardized by voters showing somebody that I have voted for your candidate. You know, rubbishing the concept of uh, secret balloting. Mm -hmm. And they, they just want to gloss over all this and then put a candidate there in a situation where we are trying to clean the system. We must not... We, we, we the followers, felt 
that we must not bow to negativity. Okay. Politics has to be cleaned up. This country cannot be allowed to be thrown to the dogs. Okay. And that is why we said, look, we are going to go to another platform because people of the state themselves have protested. The, the, okay. pensioners, the pensioners said, we're going to go on hunger strike if we are not going to contest. Interesting. So you, so, moved, so you moved from the PDP to the, to the SDP. I'm just going to ask an innocent yes. question. So um, the SDP, I do not know the strength of the SDP in um, Equity State, but I'm wondering... Is this the best platform for Mr. Shagwani to run on? And what 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 is what exactly is the strength of the SDP in the state? Is it able to win the elections for him? Because I'm hoping that this is what he wants to get from moving from the PDP to the SDP because he wants to win that presidential that that gubernatorial seat. How the, the, strong the, the, is the, the SDP, and what is the structure in the state that can guarantee Mr. Oni? this particular um, position that he seeks? Oh, thank you very much. The SDP, as it is, before we moved into SDP, has structures, but no strength. But Tiffany is a brand. Is is a brand. And everybody knows that on whatever platform he contests, is going to win. Based on his antecedents in office, you know, he's been governor before. And you can talk to anyone in the States, people feel that he should come back. In fact, statements have been made in public domain that why are people contesting with, a, with this kind of man? Because of what he has done in the state. Not because anybody, he has no money. He has no money. Is not a man given to primitive accusative tendencies. That is number one. Number two is that we must not give in to negativity. The, the media, we, I'm a journalist myself, we have to clean up this country. We cannot say because we are afraid to lose an election, we will collaborate with, I mean, with bastardizers of the process. Okay. We will compromise with those people who whose duty is to compromise the system, get into power, as in quotes, and without any sense of responsibilities. How does talk about Look at the number of people who are blind. We have to take, take, take their interest in, into consideration. Okay. You, can't prevent, you can't prevent people with people with physical to go. disabilities are already challenged. We have when to go. You now, when you now psychologically traumatize them, by preventing them from the, the process. We Let's have to stand up for them. You okay. have to stand up for them. Mr. Gusi, uh, unfortunately, t uh, time is no longer on our side, but I want to say thank you. Larry Gusi is the media director of Shagwani Campaign Organization. We wish you and your principal uh, the best of luck. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Well, thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. But before we go, uh, we'll bring you a recap of all of the conversations we've had the week long. And of course, Plus Politics will be back next week, every single weeknight. I am Mary Anacone. Have a great weekend. The call by the Southeast, or the entire South, as it were, is not uh, misplaced. But if you are to compute the number of years that the North has held power from 1999 to this period that we are, 2022, you will discover that the South has held power even more, much as we are not looking at things from that perspective. Uh, Olusha that I told you uh, in the beginning, had uh, eight years from 1999 to 2007, he was succeeded by President Yaradwa, who was short-lived. After about two years to three years, we lost President Yaradwa, and good luck, Jonathan, another Southerner, continued until about 2015. Now, if you put this together, you will discover that the South has held on to power for an 11 or more years in the 15 years of the PDP. 
Uh, what that you have in this country is a campaign of deceit. People say what you cannot, you cannot do. You can't give what you don't have. My dear, you can't give what you don't have. In the first place, and, and let me say this to you, that as the campaign comes up, all you're going to you're going to hear the first slogan, I will do good, I will do this, I will, I will, I will. Now, how will Nigeria trust you? And how will they trust them? They, they just track their court, what you've never given in the past. One thing that we must be grateful for is that under Dr. Bola Saraki, the 8th Senate stood up to the failures of the Nigerian of the executive. We must be grateful for that. I'll give you another example. Never before done. When every time they came, the executive came to the 8th Senate to say, give us an approval for a loan. He always said, the 8th Senate always said, show us how that money is going to be spent. Show us documents relating to that loan, evidence okay. for the application of that funding. Show us how we're going to repay that. Show us documents. Show us a plan from taking the debt to repaying the debt. Show us a plan. And on 11 occasions, the executive refused to do so. If you lose hope, you're gone. There are a lot of things to be hopeless about. But I will have taught us. He says, not life that matters, but the courage that you bring into it. So this country, like he said, when, uh, whether somebody is blind, whether you like Boa Mariwa or you don't like him, the truth is that when he has taken over now, we've seen an improved um, NDLA. NDLA. It was like the late Mrs. Dinabda Kuman. When she took over, so the, 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 uh, when she's to start, there is a lie, it's a flash in the pan. But you know, after she's gone, we didn't hear Navdak again like that. So there are still good people. And before even this query that fell, busting this crime, busting that crime, although anybody with any, with any fear sense of introspection wonder there's something wrong with this call. To, to, to publicity, he, he would go and do an operation, he would put it on paper, um, put, put it on social media, he would take picture, and we'll be wondering what kind of cop is this. But the truth of the matter is this you can't afford to drown in hopelessness. In fact, for people like us, you just have to fight mm. and regain and reclaim your country. The law should and must apply to all and not some. I mean, our leaders can't keep picking and choosing the laws that they want to obey and the ones that they want to discard. I look forward to a time when accountability will be the watchword of Nigeria's leaders. Maybe then, just maybe then, Nigeria can truly work.